Ladies and gentlemen, the African moon moth, Archema mimosa, is a very special species of insect. And many people have asked me the question over the years, Bart Koppens, is it possible to raise these beautiful insects in captivity? That's a very good question. And today is the day that I am going to try. Wow! What is this, folks? It is Archema mimosa, the African moon moth. And these amazing yellow creatures with long hindwing tails can be reared in captivity by hobbyists that love to breed moths. Today I will show you how in five simple steps. This species is not a complete beginner species, so if you want to breed these insects, you do need some basic experience with moths. Let's start. In most cases, the eggs are the easiest life stage for moths. When it comes to breeding African moon moths, it also applies. You can use any type of plastic container, for example petri dishes or empty food containers. After about 10 to 15 days, the first caterpillar should come out. They are orange and black in color. The next step is trying to feed them. They need food as quickly as possible. So let's show you the next step. First, find some food. They can eat many types of plants. Good suggestions are walnut, sweet gum, smoke tree, pepper tree, cherry, spurge, pistachio, eucalyptus, sclerocaria and more. Have some more suggestions. There are tons of plants to choose from honestly. Take a plastic container and add a layer of paper towels on the bottom. Then add leaves on top. What you can also do is take a small bottle or flask and fill it with water. Then eventually add cuttings of the host plant to the flask or veil. Make sure to close the neck, otherwise the caterpillars will crawl inside and drown in the water. This keeps the plant fresh for a longer time, then add it to the container. Carefully scoop up the caterpillars with a paintbrush. Carefully scoop up the caterpillars with a paintbrush. Careful, they are small and squishy. Avoid using your fingers, because you may accidentally crush them if you do. Use a soft and gentle paintbrush to scoop them up and place them on the leaves, so that they may start eating. Here I'm using the paintbrush to add them to their new enclosure. How cute! Look at these little babies. They're ready to start growing and eating. Eventually the caterpillars will grow bigger. Once they become really big, they need a space upgrade. It's time to place them in a serious enclosure. Now what is the next step that you will ask? Step 3. Big caterpillars. So now you are going to need a big plastic container. Then, cut large ventilation holes in it if you can. Cover the holes with mesh so the caterpillars cannot escape. Let's put the caterpillars inside. One of the things you can do is filling an empty bottle or soda can with tap water. Then place a plant cutting inside the bottle to keep it fresh, like flowers in a vase. The caterpillars can free roam on the plant. And now the babies will grow bigger and bigger. I'm glad you are watching my babies grow together with me. The caterpillars of this species become reasonably large over time. Important is to keep them warm, guys. This species likes warmth and heat. I rear them in a hot summer near 26 degrees Celsius and this is important. What's really cool about this species is that they can grow really fast if you can keep them hot. They can go from egg to cocoon in less than 4 weeks if kept properly hot. Isn't that awesome? They also have very long spikes or tubercules on their body. But don't worry, despite these spikes, the caterpillars are rather harmless. I had great success breeding them. Look at how big the caterpillars have become. Wow! Man, I gotta tell you, some of those caterpillars that we have left are looking fine. Once they are fully developed, you can expect the caterpillars to spin a cocoon. Wow! Here's the cocoons, awesome, but what do we do with them? Well, that, my friend, is the next step. Honestly, 
you keep them warm and on room temperature. Now I want you guys to be warned. It can take months to years for the cocoons to hatch in captivity. This is what makes this species difficult to breed sometimes. It can be very hard to control the emergence of the moths. In nature the cocoons can be dormant for a long time, especially in the more dry seasons. This explains why they are so finicky in captivity. If they don't like the conditions, they simply do not come out. What you can do if you're really serious about breeding is keep the cocoons in dry and cool conditions. And switch it up to humid and warm conditions. As to simulate the dry and wet seasons. But honestly a lot is going to depend on luck. This is really hard to control when these animals emerge. Or what they will decide to do. This is what makes breeding Archema Mimosa tricky. Eventually, if you are patient enough, however, the moths will come out and they are gorgeous. I just hope all of you are lucky enough to get them out at the same time. Next we deal with the moths. If your eggs have made it to moths, then congratulations! You've made it a long way. The moths are fluorescent yellow with long tails. And they are amazing to look at and live for a total amount of time of about 10 to 14 days on average. So basically they don't really need much maintenance or care at all. However, if you wish to pair males and females together, it is recommended that you keep them in a warm environment. Mine paired in a warm summer near 26 degrees Celsius. Placing a male and female moth in the same cage can result in a pairing if the temperatures are warm enough and if they have an airy environment. While it may be hard to tell if the moths have truly paired, one clue is when the male and female are sitting close together the next morning. Just like these two. Next thing you do is collecting the eggs. Incubate them in a plastic box. Room temperature is enough. And then you'll have the next generation of moths. Wow, thanks for watching folks. If you like moths then please subscribe to my channel. I make high quality moth videos. See you in the next one.